Hello, I'm Lisa Marie Falbo, one of the hosts of OSDIA Interviews Live. Joining me here is National President Bob Bianchi, and we're here to talk about the Grand Lodge History Project. Bob, what was the inspiration behind this video? Well, you know, Lisa, we have such a, a huge, prolific, and great organization that has a national organization, and underneath us are Grand Lodge, and subordinate lodges, and local lodges. So we wanted to show the character of who we are across the entire spectrum of the United States. And, and all while we have the same common mission and the same goals of the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, each Grand Lodge and subordinate lodge has a, has a different local flavor to it. So we figured it would be a great idea uh, to get out there and show people and show the world and show one another what each of us is doing. I'll note that this is the past administration of officers that we had in the 2019 and 21 term. Those officers have changed, but the history, Lisa, of the Grand Lodges that we are profiling hasn't. So I'm really excited about this project. The Grand Lodge of California. Hi, my name is Maria Foster Pignati, and I am a past state president of the Grand Lodge of California, which encompasses California, Western Nevada, and Southern Oregon. Our Grand Lodge was chartered in 1925, and our first state president was Eduardo Dinucci. We've had 32 state presidents, five national presidents, and our current president is John Costa. Our headquarters are in our building in San Francisco, and we have 4,000 members in 44 lodges, the oldest lodge being 98 years old. Our Western Foundation makes many philanthropic donations and awards many scholarships. Our hardworking lodges hold many different kinds of events. Some of the more unusual ones are cookie baking contests, sauce making contests, and one of our lodges even has a frozen meatball potting contest at their yearly golf tournament. Our Grand Lodge is truly a melting pot of people from all over the world and Italy and it's flavored with seasonings from the West Coast. I am very proud and I very much love to be a third generation member of the order. It's just like being with family. I'm with people that I love and with whom I can share my Italian heritage. There really is no other group like this one. The Grand Lodge of Colorado. My name is John Carocci and I'm the state president for the Grand Lodge of Colorado. The Colorado Grand Lodge was formed in 1995 with only one lodge, the Denver Lodge. The Denver Lodge has been active since 1958 and was under the Grand Lodge of California prior to 1995. When Denver reached over 600 members, they formed the Grand Lodge of Colorado with support from Justice Frank J. Montemuro and then National President Joanne Strollo. The Grand Lodge founder for Grand Lodge of Colorado and the first state president was Joe Chancho and we've had seven Grand Lodge presidents since 1995. Our lodges have great collections of banners, plaques, flags, and other items related to Sons and Daughters of Italy and many other Italian organizations dating back to the early 1900s. Special activities in Colorado include great military support and recognition, volunteering for Food for Thought, bolathons, major events to support Columbus Day, with only five lodges in Colorado, we're proud to say we have managed to award over 700 scholarships in just the last 20 years. What makes Sons and Daughters of Italy in America special is that we give every Italian American so many opportunities to express their heritage and to meet so many wonderful people with so much in common. The Grand Lodge of Connecticut. Hello, I'm Dan Onofrio, the 28th State President of the Grand Lodge of Connecticut. I'm honored and privileged to share with you some of the wonderful history the Grand Lodge of Connecticut has had with the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. It all started in 1908, where members of Torrington, Connecticut came together to form the first local lodge known as Concordia Lodge No. 20. I'm happy to report that Concordia is the oldest and active lodge still in the order today. We can't talk about Connecticut's history without talking about some of the great leaders that have come out of the state of Connecticut. Starting with this gentleman here, John Ottaviano Jr. Born in New Haven, Connecticut, and a graduate of Harvard Law School, he became the state's eighth state president, serving from 1951 to 1955. He also served in many leadership roles throughout the whole order, 
most notably Supreme Venerable. I'm proud to be serving as the 28th president of the Grand Lodge of Connecticut, continuing our mission of preserving the past like we've done with this history lesson, as well as preserving items like these handcrafted out of wood bocce balls from 1892 that were given to us by members of the Americo Vespucci Lodge in Danbury, to promoting our beautiful language and culture for future generations to come. The Grand Lodge of Delaware. I'm Angel Basilio Ramos, State President of the Grand Lodge of Delaware. I'm proud to say that our Italian roots go deep in the small state. Our Grand Lodge was chartered June 10th, 1923 in a section of the city of Wilmington known as Little Italy. Over the years, our Grand Lodge has been led by 14 state presidents. Our Grand Lodge is supported by four local lodges, namely Prince of Piedmont, Giuseppe Verdi, St. Gabriel's, and Cesar Rodney. Prince of Piedmont, one of the oldest in the OSDIA, was chartered back in 1916. Being a member of the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy is not something we have to do. It should be something we would want to do. With that desire and working together, we can prevail. God bless America. God bless the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy. And God bless the Grand Lodge of Delaware. The Grand Lodge of Illinois and Wisconsin. Hi, my name is Paul Parco. I'm the president of the Grand Lodge of Illinois and Wisconsin. Our Grand Lodge was started in 1924. Uh, Wisconsin came in in 2010. Uh, the oldest lodge we have is the Chicago Heights Lodge, uh, 1430. Uh, we have seven filial lodges at present uh, with 516 members. The, uh, Grand Lodge uh, sponsors its own fundraisers, as well as the filial lodges. The Grand Lodge of Florida. Hello, my name is Tony Cianciata. I happen to be the fortunate Grand Lodge president for the state of Florida. Uh, our lodge, our Grand Lodge was formed February 8, 1953, from two lodges that originally were under Supreme, the La Nova Sicilia Lodge, and the United Lodge that were chartered in November 9, 1923. After they reached the 500 number, they were chartered under the Supreme as the Grand Lodge of Florida. We presently have 23 lodges across the state, ranging locations from the greater northwest of the Panhandle, all the way down to the southernmost tip of Florida and Key West. Our lodges range from 26 to over 150 members at each lodge. The Grand Lodge has approximately 1,500 members at the moment. Thank you everyone and God bless. The Grand Lodge of Maryland. My name is Anita Lombardi Riley and I'm the proud president of the Grand Lodge of Maryland. On July 18th of this year, 2020, we celebrated our 100th anniversary as a Grand Lodge, which to me is a fantastic feat. Sometimes we have to go back to the old to get what's new again. And I think encouraging younger folk to join um, is a real reason for them to join is to promote their culture and heritage and realizing, of course, that things are not the way they used to be, but that doesn't mean that we can't do some of the old things that we used to do now. So to sum it all up, the Grand Lodge of Maryland is alive and well and kicking. So thanks so much and hope to see you all real soon. The Grand Lodge of Massachusetts. My name is Denise Fernari and I am the state president of the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, Grand Lodge of Massachusetts. Our Grand Lodge was first chartered on January 25th, 1914 in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have 29 presidents that have led our Grand Lodge. Our first state president was Saverio R. Romano. Currently, we have 51 lodges that comprise our Grand Lodge with a total of 4,773 members. Our oldest active lodge is the Wista Lodge 168. It was chartered on May 25th, 1913. 
We have many unique activities that our lodges have hosted, such as meatball cookout contest, night at the races, comedy shows, and of course, we have to have our bocce tournaments. Uh, that we have so many lodges that have their own courts and they love to play young and old. There's so many things that we're starting up and we're trying to target the younger audience to get more people involved. The advice I would like to give to other Grand Lodges in dealing with this pandemic is keep staying connected to our members through our virtual platforms and continue to be proactive and promoting the work of our order. The Grand Lodge of Nebraska. Hello, my name is Deanna Micholi and I am representing Dan Machuela, the current president of the State Lodge of Nebraska. In 1926, the first lodge was formed under the name Benito Mussolini Lodge, number 1419. Shortly after, in 1928, the lodge number 1492 was assigned. In 1929, the State Lodge of Nebraska was established. In July of 1934, four lodges asked for recognition, and in January of 1935, lodges 1717, 1718, and 1719 were merged into Lodge 1492 at the Knights of Columbus Hall, where 450 people attended the dinner and 600 people were present for the initiation. Later in 1947, the Benito Mussolini Lodge was renamed and chartered as the Cristofaro Colombo Lodge number 1419. And in 1949, all four lodges were merged into the Cristofaro Colombo Lodge. In 1954, heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano came to Omaha to cut the ribbon at the opening ceremony of the newly remodeled hall on 1238 South 10th Street in the Little Italy district of downtown Omaha. The Colombo Lodge stages an annual golf tournament with the proceeds going to aid those with Cooley's anemia. Dan Machuela has been the State Lodge president since May 2019. His father, George, has been members has been a member for 37 years and his brother Jeff and Nick have been members for about 17 years. The Lodge currently has 383 members. Thank you to Dan for allowing me to represent your Lodge and I wish you the best in all of your future endeavors. The Grand Lodge of New Jersey. Hello, my name is Nick Berzichelli, president of Grand Lodge of New Jersey. The Grand Lodge was chartered in 1911. We currently have 25 lodges with around 200 men and women as members. We currently have three lodges that own their own buildings, one of which is my lodge, the Carl West Marina Lodge, number 2580 in Paulsboro, the home of champions, the largest lodge with around 275 members. Also, the Grand Lodge owns its own building and grounds in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. The New Jersey Grand Lodge once owned and operated an orphanage in Nutley, New Jersey. The proceeds from the sale continue to benefit the Grand Lodge today. And during this pandemic time, New Jersey has been able to charter two lodges. So we have a new lodge in Fairfield with almost 35 new members and another lodge in Hamilton, New Jersey with almost 95 members. You know, on a personal note, the order has allowed me to meet a lot of great Italians living in my community, living in New Jersey, and throughout the country. It's opened up, it's opened up me to a larger community that I get to call friends. And that's what the Sons of Italy is about, the fraternal friendship. So thank you for the opportunity uh, to be the state president and to be a member of the orders. The Grand Lodge of New York. Friends, my name is Anthony Nacarado and I joined the Sons of Italy in September, 1978. My love of our order started as a way for me to keep in touch with my place of birth. However, I soon realized that the order does much more than just preserve the heritage of our homeland. It provides scholarship, it helps countless charities, and protects our history from unwarranted attacks. New York State was the first Grand Lodge founded in 1911, six years after our order was founded in 1905. Our first Grand Venerable was Anthony J. Galata, we have 61 lodges with about 6,700 members. We are proud to have 10 lodges that have celebrated their 100th anniversary. The Ugyamadya Lodge in the Bronx is the oldest lodge instituted in 1911. Each June, we are proud to place a wreath at the building in Little Italy where Dr. Vincenzo Solero founded our order. We also operate the Garibaldi Miucci Museum in Staten Island. Managing a 180-year-old building, which is a national landmark, is not an easy task, financially and technically. It requires devoted volunteers to keep it properly operated and maintained. 
Our unity is our strength. Ciao and all the best from the Grand Lodge of New York. The Grand Lodge of the Northwest. I am Rosetta Stella Beiersdorf, and I am the cur current state president for the Grand Lodge of the Northwest, uh, which was originally known as the Grand Lodge of Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. The Grand Lodge was chartered in 1929. Uh, before that, uh, the Tacoma Lodge was founded in 1923 and was given the number of 1175 and it is known as the Mother Lodge of the Grand Lodge. We have 16 lodges in the Grand Lodge of the Northwest, uh, one of them being in Eugene, Oregon, which is the Altimonte Lodge. And we have 1,152 members. I joined when I was 16 years old in 1966, and I've been a member going on 52 years. And my kids, when they turned 16, they all joined and they're still members. They're 25, uh, over 25 year members. Um, but it's just, you know, I just have so many friends. They're my, they're my life and my family. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. My name is Joe Marino, president of the State Lodge of Pennsylvania. Happy to say that we have 21 very active lodges here in the state. One of which I believe, since it was started with the help of Dr. Vincenzo Solaro, is probably one of the oldest in the in the order as well. In addition to that, we have the pleasure of hosting three additional lodges with over 100 to 107 years in the order, still active, several with their own buildings. And that's quite a that's quite a nice thing to say you know, to the membership and to the men and women who have made this possible. The Grand Lodge of Ohio. Hello, I'm Tony Perfilio, president of the Grand Lodge of Ohio, Order Sons and Daughters of Italy and America. The Grand Lodge of Ohio was chartered by the Supreme Lodge as the sixth Grand Lodge in the order in Cleveland on May 16, 1915. Ohio's first lodge, Guglielmo Marconi No. 147, had been chartered in Cleveland that same year. In 1939, the Grand Lodge became a fraternal benefit society under Ohio law. In its formative years, from 1917 until 1924, Dr. Giovanni Barincelli was the Grand Venerable and still is known as the father of the order in Ohio. Under his leadership, the Grand Lodge created a mortuary fund, supported Red Cross and relief funds organized cultural activities, donated to student scholarships, and sponsored Italian schools. Those traditions are honored to this day. Dr. Botticelli traveled throughout Ohio, and by 1924, the end of his tenure as Grand Venerable, he had established 57 lodges. We persevere, nevertheless, with liberty, equality, and fraternity. Thank you. The Grand Lodge of Rhode Island. My name is John Bonaventura. I'm the Grand Lodge president of the Rhode Island Sons of Italy. Our lodge was founded in 1915 by an influential Italian immigrant, Antonio Cabotosto. Mr. Cabotosto was a Harvard Law School graduate and he became the Associate Justice of the Rhode Island Superior Court. Our first president was Luigi Scala, and Mr. Scala served for 40 years as president. Presently, the Grand Lodge of Rhode Island has a little bit more than 700 members. In the past, we have had scopa contests, orchard tournaments, we played tombola, we were taught the tarantella, we had a toga night and I was the president of my local lodge and they carried me in and that was a sight to be seen. We given out scholarships, we give out scholastic scholarships as well as athletic scholarships. I can tell you that I'm so proud to be a member of this wonderful organization. I'm an only child and since I joined 20 years ago, I feel that I now have many brothers and sisters. 
Grazie mille. The Grand Lodge of Virginia. Hello, my name is Larry Brennan. I'm the current president of the Grand Lodge of Virginia. The Grand Lodge of Virginia was installed on November 12, 1992. The Grand Lodge of Virginia comprises of five local lodges within the state of Virginia. They are the Roma Lodge in Virginia Beach, the Giuseppe Verdi Lodge in Richmond, the Itlow American Citizens Lodge in Portsmouth, the Peninsula Italian American Lodge in Newport News, and the Italian Heritage Lodge in Northern Virginia. And as we talk about our local lodges, our local lodges are always supporting their communities while displaying their Italian heritage. The Grand Lodge of West Virginia. I'm here representing Richard Viglianco, who is the state president of West Virginia's Sons and Daughters of Italy. Richard has been acting president for the past six years and has been a member of the OSDIA for over 20 years. West Virginia has a total of six active lodges and when Richard first joined, they had well over a thousand members. Sadly, now they are down to 438. With that being said, Richard wants me to highlight how important it is to get the younger generations involved. Morgantown is his own personal lodge, and when they recruited just one younger member, it snowballed into that member getting one other person interested and so on and so forth. This is the momentum that Richard wants the other lodges in his state to go off of. To make his members interested, Richard thinks social time after meetings paired with any pasta, cheese, and wine are a surefire way to get everyone in the spirit. In 2019, Morgantown celebrated its 100 year anniversary, becoming the oldest lodge in the state. That is not the only exciting news for this lodge, but they also have a member, Annie, who is 92 years young and is the lodge's oldest member. Lastly, the West Virginia Lodge had a different take on COVID and its effects on their meetings. They all voted to continue meeting throughout the past month. They decided it was safe to meet at their Knights of Columbus Hall, socially distanced and with a mask on. And to me, that truly shows the dedication that they have to the club. Thanks Richard for allowing me to represent your lodge. And it seems like you guys have a wonderful set of traditions that I hope last a very long time. Albert Bellotti Lodge, 2540 Mesa, Arizona. Hi brothers and sisters, this is Mike Parmesano from the Bellotti Lodge, 2540. Bellotti Lodge was chartered in 1983 and was the Mesa Lodge. In 1990, the lodge was renamed Albert Bellotti Lodge 2540 after Albert Bellotti, who worked tirelessly for the lodge. Today, Bellotti Lodge has 61 active members. Our goal is to increase in 2021 by being more visible in the community. Myrtle Beach Lodge 2662. Hello, my name is Bob Panicchia. I'm the president of Myrtle Beach Lodge 2662 in South Carolina. We were the first Sons of Italy Lodge chartered in South Carolina in 1992. Our first president was Leo DeRigo, and we have had 10 presidents since then. We currently have 400 members, which makes us the largest subordinate lodge in the country. In 2007, we bought our, a building and converted it to our current lodge home. And we are, so we are the only lodge in South Carolina to have our own building. Locally, we support between eight and 10 local charities, plus our national charities. We fund our um, operation through a spring festival and a Columbus Day festival, a golf tournament, which benefits our community kitchen, which this year served over 130,000 meals to people who couldn't otherwise get them. And we do offer one scholarship for graduating seniors, high school seniors of Italian heritage. Some people are still under the belief that you have to be Italian to join. So we tell them, no, you don't need to be Italian. You just need to have a sense of community, patriotism, and, uh, the willingness to volunteer. The Order Sons and Daughters of Italy of Canada. Hello everyone. My name is Carmine Felice and I'm the National President of the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy of Canada. The first Canadian lodge, Giuseppe Verdi, was established in 1915 in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. G. Verdi Lodge was started as a social club for Italian immigrants in 1914 by Father J.P. Martinez, a dedicated Catholic priest. By 1940, the order had 29 lodges across Ontario. However, the 1940s proved to be a difficult time for the Sons of Italy in Canada. When Italy declared war on Britain in June 1940, 
the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP, arrested many Grand Lodge officers, as well as local Lodge officers and members. Many Italian Canadians were interned, put in concentration camps during the Second World War. Some 31,000 Italian Canadians were registered as enemy aliens. Some lodges even had their facilities confiscated by the Canadian government. After the Second World War, with the influx of new Italian immigrants, the order slowly rebuilt and rejuvenated, focusing more on social, cultural, and charitable activities. The order of Sons and Daughters of Italy has grown in strength and numbers since that time with lodges now across Canada. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless, God bless Italy, God bless the United States of America, and God bless Canada. Subordinate Lodge of Rome. So the Roma House, the Lodge, was built in 2020 and with a consistence of 25 members. Many activities were um, launched in uh, 2020. Among them, we remember the Dante D, that was the celebrations of uh, the Dante Alighieri National Day. And uh, in that day, we launched on Facebook uh, some podcasts with uh, uh, some verses by uh, Dante Alighieri that, was, uh, that were interpreted by Emanuele Carucci Viterbi, he is an Italian actor that uh, uh, gave his voice to the very wonderful verses of Dante Alighieri. For us, the Italian Americans and the Americans of Italian descent are a great capital of relations. We are very proud to be in this organization and we would like to exchange value with every other lodge in the United States. And there you have it, just some of the great things that we do with the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, where our men and women have raised tens of millions of dollars for charities of all sorts, raised money for scholarships, and go out into the community making a difference. If you are interested in joining the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy, no matter how young or how old, you can either have an at-large membership where you can join online, or you can join a local chapter in Lodge, or even a Grand Lodge. All you got to do is go to www.osia.org and see all the membership benefits you get and how you can join as a member. This organization started in 1905. I am so proud to be the national president and have been given the trust to move this organization forward. And we hope you can be a part of it as well. And why not? Join our social media platforms on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. And don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, and hit that subscribe button. Hope to see you.